Hey, what's up YouTube? Rob Brendan here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, personality types and performance and also um, maybe one more for the guys, but okay for the ladies as well. Um, I, I used to work a lot in um, the dating niche, um, you know, men and how uh, making it easier for them to be able to approach or speak to women. Um, and I, I want to talk about personality types, personality types and that. So um, what brought me onto this subject of uh, uh, performance and how we are as a person, like our a default way of being, uh, what brought me onto this subject was I had a friend stay over, he was an ex-professional footballer, a very, very good, um, very uh, famous footballer, and he stayed with us. And, and we, we were talking a lot about psychology. Everything always goes back to psychology when we're talking. And um, we were saying things like, um, for you know, someone like Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo, for them, they're constantly reinventing themselves. And uh, it, it's almost like their, um, their set program is to constantly be obsessively wanting to improve themselves. Um, and that was the difference between like the elite level and average players. He he was like, it's, a hundred, it's all here. It's all how uh, everything you do every day, consistency, um, which comes from your way of being, your kind of personality, uh, will give you the results you're after. So uh, we, we got onto the subject of goalkeepers. Now, um, for me, the best goalkeepers I've worked with and I've worked with um, you know, some of the best in the world, their personality type is more to the uh, logical and almost obsessively, I'm not saying uh, Asperger's, or, but they're kind of bordering on a little bit awkward, uh, very uh, mechanical, um, precise, maybe consistent, not boring, but you know what I'm getting at towards that end. Whereas, say someone who's very creative and um, someone who's very creative and you know flamboyant and there's l less structure. Yeah. Now the top goalkeepers are much more structured. So um, I have a someone who close to me. I can't really say who it is. Uh, when when we eat, um, he uh, puts his radishes in. He always eats four radishes and has them lined up, and he has tomatoes and they're cut a certain way and he takes forever to eat like four times longer than me whereas I just go whoa and I'm like yeah and I'm, I'm talking and he's just precise and so he's much more structured so the top goalkeepers are much more like that why because they need to consistently um you know ball comes to them it's just the same thing boom technique and very kind of the same thing. They've got their rectangle goal to, to look after. Um, they need to be able to keep their concentration consistently all through the game. Not have, there's a long period of time when they do nothing, but they need to be able to constantly keep that um, going. And, you know, when you look at some of the goalkeepers that have made lots of mistakes, they're, you know, they've got really long hair. There's a guy at the moment who's got really long hair and he loves himself and, well, I don't know if he loves himself, but you can see that he's got long hair and he likes the way he looks and uh, he's made, he's inconsistent. And as a goalkeeper, you just want someone who's really boring and consistent, okay? Um, and, and that's, you can't teach that. That's how you're born. That's shown, uh, you see it in two-year-olds, their personality is already coming through. And, and uh, that makes me feel a bit better about my sporting career because I used to play a lot of squash, tennis, and stuff like that. And I'm much, I hate, um, I'm kind of dyslexic, so I find it difficult to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10, in, in a row. And um, pat, um, you know, systems and structures I find very difficult. So when I played squash, the best guys just kept the ball going down the line constantly until the other person made a mistake. And I found that so boring. And what I would do is I'd, do unorthodox, unconventional shots to the opposite drop shots. And it was great, but it, at the highest level, you just can't do that. You've got to be like those tennis players. They're just constantly able to, without fault, 
you know, bong, 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 and I couldn't play against them. Um, and, you know, that consistency is one of the things that I've been working on a bit more. I've got to improve it. Um, uh, yeah, so I think that's one of the reasons why, um, yeah, I just, I think people who can consistently just do things again and again and again and again, like obsessively, uh, are obviously going to get really good at something and someone who can't do that isn't. Okay, so maybe that's a little bit of an excuse by, for, from me, but I would say um, that, um, you know, I just, I'm not, that I've got other positives where I can just shoot a video and talk shit and and whereas a really like ee, ee, guy will be like mm, mm, mm. Um, for instance Theresa May the Prime Minister of, of the UK I listened to her de debate in Parliament recently and statistics she was ridiculous like a martial artist she was like blah 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 like no mistakes in like a machine um, and then she went to this conference and walked on the stage and they had music and she tried to dance and ah it was so painful it's become a meme i don't know if i can find it put in this video but she's like going like a robot Ooh. everyone's like oh no because she's not creative and type but you, you don't want that in a prime minister you want someone who's dependable consistent actually i'm not getting into politics but um you need someone who's a little bit more cerebral logical right okay um, and that brings me on to men. If you look at the dating niche, I've been to, I've spoken at conferences where the, you know, it's men go there to learn how to be players or good with women or improve themselves, self development, but very much to do with they can't speak with women or they're not good with women. And the majority are logical and that type. So they, find it very the complexity and the spontaneity and the creativity of in conversation is so complex that they can't they like maths but the other side is too complex for them so the people i know who the the best at you know interacting and talking with women are funny and blah, blah, but they're not so structured so these guys are all like uh, engineers, and so they have to learn lines to become more comfortable in talking with women. It's just, you know, I find that fascinating. And then I created a body language product, a reprogramming product, and it did very well with them because their bodies were so rigid, um, it created three-dimensional flow, like a, it, was, it was a three-dimensional program. So they became more fluid in their movement, and that changed their personality somewhat but also um men and women the more f more ease and flow you have in your body the more attractive it is the more restricted it is it's kind of uh, unattractive yeah the best dancers are the one with the most flow and they that attract science backs that up so the more rigid you are in dancing is kind of you're not showing how um reproductive you are so to speak we go to kind of down on that level so um, my point being is don't beat yourself up if you're more of an engineer type uh, or a goalkeeper type, you know, just that those are your strengths. Now you can work on improving some, but you're never going to be like that, you know, like the artist, you know, co comedian type thing, but you can improve yourself and just don't compare yourself because it's uh, apples and pears. Yeah that's what I, I think anyway and um you know if you work on your body you can change your mind to a certain degree but you know um engineers are wonderful and you if you get really comfortable with the way you are i think that's important and in terms of performance know that um you know if you want to be a lawyer you've got to be good at arguments and that logical type of uh, jujitsu uh if if you want to be um you know, work with energetics, you're going to have to have a way of like patterning loads of information. Like I think dyslexics do that really well. So when someone's talking to me, I'm picking up on stuff and they're like, how'd you get that? And I'm sure it was there somewhere, but it's because I can do that. But don't get me to do maths and accounts and stuff because I'm literally, my head's going to fall on the table. It'll fall off. 
Um, so I get someone to do that for me, yeah? So I think what I just wanted to say was we're, we're all different and um, that makes the world go around. All right, listen, uh, just my thoughts. Uh, let me know your thoughts on, um, on uh, your personality type. What do you think you're stronger at and what, what you're not strong at? I think that's a, it's a really important thing to, to know about yourself, your strengths. And I read a good book about that, Strength Finder. That was pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, and subscribe if you want to uh, receive my videos when they come out and smash up that like button and have a great Wednesday. Cheers now. Bye-bye.